facilities for that big man. I think if you're going to accuse people of racism, and I have a real vested interest in this debate, because I have been accused of racism simply for disbelieving Meghan Markle, who we now know was not telling the truth throughout that interview. Uh, and I feel very angry about that and very aggrieved about that. And I've seen friends of mine like Sharon Osbourne being removed from being removed from their job for defending me because apparently they were defending a racist. I've seen Don Lemon at CNN, the guy who sits in my old office, who I thought was a friend, actually say on his show that I had committed an act of racism by disbelieving somebody. That's an act of racism. That's an act of racism. Uh, so you have the Queen and frankly, every member of the royal family is still smeared with the idea it may have been them who expressed concern over the skin colour of Archie. Well, did they? And if so, who was it? As a British taxpayer who helps pay for the... Cool, just cool into the mouth. ...the royal family. I'd like to know, actually, if there's a real racist inside the palace. I, I've met the royals many times. I don't believe they're racist at all. In fact, the only member of the royal family who has had to publicly apologise for being racist is Prince Harry, who a few years ago had to apologise after using a deeply offensive racist term. I'm going to come. Oh. Offensive racist term about a Pakistani soldier that he was working with. And he used other racial slurs as well in, in, in that story, that which, was, uh, which was published in one of the British tabloids, which may explain his hatred of the British tabloids. Uh, but he's the only one. And isn't that ironic? That never got mentioned by <laughs> Oprah Winfrey. And it should have been mentioned. You know, my, my problem with this whole interview was that these incredibly damaging allegations were tossed out there. And incredibly <laughs> damaging allegations were tossed out there and none of them were challenged properly none of them were challenged based on actual reality or none of them were asked well who is this person i, I think i think it's fair to say this is my opinion but that at the most profound level oprah is a dishonest person and she has an agenda that uh, is never stated but it's very obvious if come on now doll come uh, is never stated, but it's very obvious if you watch. So I'm, I'm going to stop tormenting you with sound bites, but I just will put one more uh, on the screen. This was the moment that the I think the fill-in weather guy shows up to, to join the pylon and berate you, and the implication is that you're a racist. Here's the moment. Let me ask you honestly, on the issue of race, mm -hmm. she has now got the whole of America and the worst of the world, frankly, looking upon the palace. All for today. So wait a minute. The palace, the monarchy, the queen, everyone in the royal family as a bunch of racists. Is there a difference? If it was said, perhaps in all innocence, right, and they just said, oh, what, what colour baby might you have, without any suggestion of it being a concern or a worry if it had darker skin, would that in itself, would just I the question be racist? In, that in itself is fine, but you have to think about... <sighs> I'm really mad! To, think about how it feels on the receiving end because what we're speculating is has as to how that message yeah, i don't know how it was communicated where did that come from what was that really about i mean this is a guy who wouldn't seem to have moral or journalistic standing to lecture you about anything and yet he does presumably to his benefit what's the backstory there if you don't mind telling us well the backstory is he's the he's the stand-in where the <laughs> The, he's the stand-in weather guy who, who does the weather occasionally. He's not a journalist, um, but he's somebody that I've helped with his career a number of times when he's asked me to. And he's somebody who occasionally takes part in our debates in the way that you might see Al Roker do on the Today Show, similar kind of thing. But he's not there very often. But I had specifically asked for him to come in that morning because he'd sent me a private message in which he... I've got you, homie. Let's go. She expressed, you know, some concern about what he felt was I, I wasn't really understanding where Meghan Markle was coming from as a biracial woman. He was uh, himself biracial and he wanted to explain to us. I said, well, come on air. Let's have the conversation. But the moment he came on air, uh, he came with a pretty premeditated attack on me on a pretty personal level. And frankly, I just wasn't going to have it. Now, I, I walked off for a few minutes. Then I, I realized this is stupid. I shouldn't have walked off. You know? 
shouldn't have walked off. You know, you should always be able to have a debate. I was angry in the moment uh, that he was trying to personalise this, make out I had some personal vendetta about Meghan Markle, which I don't. And I came back and we then had a pretty lively and quite enlightening, like half hour debate about this. But I couldn't persuade how many times we learned that Megan cried and was in a heap and was in a puddle. And I think we're supposed to feel bad for her. And Harry, I think by the end of this book, you're supposed to realize that Harry is just a really sad, unfortunate person. I feel good. I feel happy. Because um, he was born to give a spare kidney to his brother. <laughs> so that just so factually listen that it never that conversation never criticized Megan as we can hear I am people say well you're racist and honestly it's not even a second thought to me only only comes up in the minds of those who are truly racist and that's never people like me I'm just observing the dress is better today so wait I think the dress is better on Kate how she wears it is better so this racist thing is really old and tired but I think it's just people's way of sort of saying you must not criticize Megan what the Back at Buckingham Palace, Katie Hopkins is still railing against Meghan. But there's also an admission. An economic... Economic Markle Sparkle. Harry and Meg's a new money. I can almost hear the tills. Yes, they are new money. And I do think in terms of a new... What? In terms of a new kind of era of profitability the social media generation for the royal family and all of that of course markle's got that sewn up but but this oh, is what it's all hang about on a second i nearly said something nice about you Mar again about you Markle. concede that she's good for royal business no she's good for business she's good for Meghan markle's business now while Meghan trashing seems to be a popular sport at the moment Bam! Oh, bop! Popular sport at the moment. It also pays to remember her greatest supporter is also a great warrior. I think Harry's the most interesting part of this whole story. So true. He's do Let's go! So that was this whole story. So true. He's doing his own thing. True. He's almost winding everyone up true, going, come true, get true. me, come get me, because I'm true. after a fight. Oh, this is so true. And it is very much like he is just determined. Just cool. It's very much like he is just determined to go anti-establishment. He's flicking the V sign to everything that he was brought up by. So it's not Meghan. It's Harry's fault. It's Harry. Wait a minute. But Harry is redeemable, because Harry was in a uniform and he was in a helicopter and he was in Afghanistan. Megan was only ever in cheap movies. <laughs> what? Of a major national political party in this country. Uh. You've already seen the First Minister of Scotland lose her job for being unable to defend women's rights, for thinking it's fine for a male rapist to be put in a women's prison. She had to go. Fact. We've seen Sakir Starmer wriggling around. I mean, let's watch a bit of Keir Starmer trying to explain what a woman is. For 99. I don't know, 9% of women, everything is a matter of biology. For 99.9 something percent of women, um, it's all biological. What? What the? <clears throat> and it's very straightforward. And let me be clear for the. For the vast majority of women, this is all about biology, and of course they don't have a penis. We all know that. I don't think we can conduct this debate with, you know... Sorry, have I, I, get I this offended you in some no. Stop it. Get some help. No, no, it's just... Uh, no, 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 I just... A I woman can have a penis. I don't think that um, discussing this issue in this way helped. Is y'all right upstairs? That's Sir Keir Starmer, another knight of the realm, knighted because he's a smart lawyer, intelligent man, also failing to explain simply what a woman is, which, of course, is just an adult human female. It's not a trick question. It's never used to be a controversial thing. And yet he can't answer 
And now Sir Ed Davey has taken it to a new level altogether. Let's just replay what Ed Davey said again, just to really try and comprehend exactly what he's saying. And I think we need to manage this and think about it and debate it with a bit more maturity and a bit more compassion. <laughs> well, that's what Sir Keir Starmer once said to me, and he never did answer the question, can a woman have a penis? Well, I've just answered that question. They can. Um, listen, I've made it really clear that if people, um, uh, the vast majority of people, will have the same gender as their biological sex, but a small number won't. What do you mean by that? So a woman can have a penis? Well, quite clearly. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Isn't it? Appointment is immeasurable. Or have I gone mad? It's unbelievable that in 2023, this is now something that political leaders are saying, that women can have penises. They can't. It's just a biological fact. It's not transphobic. It's not about trans rights. I absolutely believe that trans people should have rights to fairness and equality, like everybody else in life. Okay. Regardless of any, anything else. But you cannot deny biological scientific fact. And when two of the three major political parties in this country are run by men who are denying biological fact with these public statements, what does that say to women in this country? Who's defending their rights? Who is explaining what a woman is? Who's standing up for women? Who is just telling the country what a woman is? Uh. It's unbelievable. Anyway, rant over, but I have had that clip in my head all day and I can't get it out of my head. Thank God Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister, when I asked him that question at number 10 Downing Street, just simply replied, it's an adult human female. That's all that needs to be said. That doesn't make sense. Like a man is an adult human male and trans people are trans people and everyone should get respected. But you can't deny biological fact. Fact. Right. I've got that off my chest. Um, let's turn to Prince Harry. Well, last time I checked, is identifying as a very irritating adult human male. Why? Why? I'm joined now by the author and historian, Dr. Tessa Dunlop, former chief superintendent of the British Department of Police, Dal Babu, and Talk TV's royal editor, Sarah Houston. Right, Sarah, just bring us up to speed, because Harry's involved in about a thousand legal actions at the moment against the world. What is the thing that happened today, and why is it significant? Wait for it. Today, a judge decided that... You are identifying Harry, as a woman, right? I am indeed. Uh, Harry couldn't uh, have a judicial review on his request to pay for his own security when he comes to the UK. So when he was still a member of the royal family, working member of the royal family, he was entitled to 24-7 police protection. Nice paid for by the taxpayer. When he stepped down in 2020, he lost that automatic right. He's got another legal challenge, which is about the decision to remove that automatic right. This in particular was about him wanting to pay for it. He made the offer that he would fund it. The Metropolitan Police said, we're not guns for hire. The Home Office said it would be inappropriate. And today the judge has decided that it isn't right. It would set a wrong precedent because effectively you could have all kinds of wealthy people coming into the UK saying, well, we want to hire Metropolitan but Police Officers to protect us. But he could still win the review about the basic principle of whether he should be allowed moral protection when he's here. Uh. Yes, and that review looks at the way in which the decision was made and the fact that he wasn't part of, of that decision. So it's not over yet. And actually, he could still appeal against this part of it. But for now, he, he can't take it further. <gasps> he does still have... We don't have a date set for the other wider case about him losing his security. It, it's about automatic security as well, because actually it will be judged on a case-by-case -case basis. So when he was back for the coronation, he was part of the security bubble. He was protected because he right. was attending a royal engagement. This is about when he comes back okay. with his family. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Right. Del, you've been a you know, senior police officer in this country. As a British taxpayer, regardless of my personal feelings about 
Ari and everything else. Just as a British taxpayer, why should I be paying, just on principle, okay. for someone who's quit the royal family, quit royal duty, gone off to America, now makes hundreds of millions of dollars, normally by trashing his family, whatever, you can take a view either way on whether you agree with that. It's not really relevant. But why should somebody who's made that conscious decision to exit both the country and the royal family and royal duty, why should they get such a perk when they come back here of being protected by our Royal Protection Squad? That was easy. Well, I think that's a legitimate challenge, and I think that's what a lot of people are asking. What do you think? Well, I, I don't think he should be entitled to that because I think he, he's not a royal working royal. If you're a, a working royal, no matter where you are in the pecking order, then you have that right to be protected. OK. He's essentially, it's a commercial enterprise now with Prince Harry. He's a celebrity. Yeah, so he'll come along and he'll want, to, he'll want that, all the resources there. We don't actually know how much policing the royal family costs. Uh, so essentially he's unaware of what, what that cost would be. So in terms of the process now, he will, if there is a legitimate target placed on him, mm. if there's any intelligence placed on him, he will be, like everybody else, have a uh, police protection. Right. For specifically for that. But I think what he's asking for is general uh, protection 24-7, which he's been used to all his life. I think he's now finding it extremely difficult to realise that working as a celebrity, working on a commercial basis, then it, the world is totally different. Tessa, why? Why should we be paying for him to have unfettered access to one of the top protection squads in the country. I'm going to explain to you in a sec why I think we need to flip that question around. OK. But just to answer initially the point, or rather pose another question, is once a prince, always a prince. And I think what's interesting about Harry's case is the naivety, the presumption that everything that was around him, he wore like a second skin. If you have 24-hour security from the day that you're born, you probably don't actually realise where the line is. Fact what's being royal and what's just being a regular bloke, celebrity or mm. not. And I think it's been hard for him to shed that print skin. He never will. It's one of the reasons why he's a global celebrity. So that was a f***ing lie. But, Piers, the good news is, and it's somewhere to turn your attention in the future, if Harry isn't deemed to be a sufficient risk to need this protection, and we've, we, the public, have shed that royal skin for him, then I would counter, why don't we start examining the bloated security bill that so many of the royal family guzzle? And incidentally, we don't know how much that cost is. It's higher than the sovereign grant, they think, because whenever people put in a, so, an information um, FYR in it, they don't get a response. So you would take away prote protection? I, oh, hang on. For working royal. What do you mean by that? Protection? I, oh, hang on for working royals who are day by day doing their duty for the country and in return they get protection because there are lots of people out there that may want to harm them. Uh, Their targets, right, we know that they've been attacked before, right? You would take all that away. No, you're putting words in my mouth. Well, what would some, you do? Of, some of the lesser royals don't require... Which of the working royals would you take it away from? Well, for instance, I mean, did you get hot under the collar, as you have just done now on Gender and Harry, about Eugenie in 2009 having a security brief involving, they don't have security two, involving two policemen who went with her on her gap year to Cambodia? <laughs>